Hello, welcome to week five of the Waverly Singers online rehearsals. Um, perhaps I'm going to start calling these blogs rather than rehearsals, or at least um, sort of half and half really, because in a way um, we're not uh, replicating a full rehearsal experience, we're more talking about the music um, and this wonderful piece of music. It is very much an important part of performing a choral work that you don't just know the choral bits. Um, it's really important to understand the work and see how your part, the chorus, fits into the work as a whole. So um, that's why I've taken such trouble to show you the whole piece so that you can really experience and, and learn about a little bit about um, how it's all put together. We've talked um, about how Bach was very uh, profoundly a religious, religious person and um, also used a lot of symbolism in his um, um, writing and composition. Um, and many people have observed to me over my career, and um, and it's a generally um, accepted fa fact, I think, that there's a lot in common between music and mathematics. A um, lot of, lot of um, not just about the frequencies and the physics of it all, but in terms of the structure. And I suppose that in any, in any art, there is, of course, mathematical um, uh, proportions, and, and, and that's true of, of paintings and of plays uh, just as much as music. Um, for Bach, his symbolism in number um, was very much um, re often relating to a religious idea. Um, and, and the one thing in the B minor mass that comes back again and again is the use of the number three, which of course is, is uh, denoting the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Um, and in fact, the whole B minor mass is um, made up of 27 pieces of music, uh, which uh, those, the mathematical among you will know is, is three cubed, three times three times three. Um, and what we're gonna do today is to finish the first part of the work, the, the bit of it that was written, as we say, um, for completed in 1733 as a standalone piece, the the bit that we now know is everything up until the beginning of the Credo, so all of the Kyrie and all of the Gloria movements. And within um, the Gloria and the Credo, um, each of those two movements is itself divided into nine, so we've got three sections of three pieces. So the symbolism is very strong, um, he's using the number three all the time and grouping the movements um, by into threes and as we've said before sometimes there's this palindrome idea as well so of course in 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 um in a, in a series of nine movements the movement number five becomes the important one with four pieces before it and four pieces after it so what we're doing today is looking at the last three of the nine bits of the gloria um and we left it last week um rather um tantalisingly uh, leaving it on the end of Nostrom. However, because we're only going to cover one choral piece um, new this week, I thought it would be great to um, sing through again um, the Grazias, which we did last week, um, to get your voices warmed up. But before that, and I can hear the excitement in your in your, uh, uh, in your voices already, um, there's a new warm-up uh, which I've done, um, so um, do go through the warm up, then sing through the Grazias to get your voices warmed up properly. And then we'll talk um, about the solar movement, Quisedes, which, which uh, is the first of the three we're discussing today.